Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we will discuss over applied and under applied overhead. Now it's very important to see the big picture. And what is the big picture? The big picture is this. We have basically three, three costs, three types of cost, material, labor, and under material, we're going to have direct and indirect. Let's say we have direct material, direct labor, and anything that's, that, that's not direct material and direct labor is manufacturing overhead. So this is the account that we're going to be dealing with. So the manufacturing overhead account for everything that's not direct material and not direct labor in a manufacturing en environment. Simply put, let's take a look at it. I'm just going to call this account overhead. Now, the overhead account, it's going to have a debit side and a credit side. On the debit side, we are going to keep track of the actual overhead, what actually incurred. Then at some point, we're going to apply, we're going to transfer the overhead from the, from the overhead account to work in process. So eventually, we're going to have to credit overhead the overhead account and debit work in process, which we saw this in the prior session using a predetermined overhead rate. And this is what we are dealing with here. So this is the applied or the estimated, what we estimated based on the predetermined overhead rate. Now, actual and applied will not be the same. There's going to be a difference between actual and applied. Sometimes we're going to have over applied or under applied. So we need to know the difference between those two accounts. So what is over applied and under applied? It's the difference between two things. The amount of overhead cost applied, which is the estimated amount, and how do we estimate this using a predetermined overhead rate and the actual overhead cost? The difference between those two, it's either under applied or over applied. When do we have it under applied? When do we have it over applied? Let's start with under applied. Under applied exists when the amount of overhead estimated. So let's go back here and have a T account for overhead just to kind of to see this. We said this is the actual and this is the applied. I'm going to show you this T account several times because once you understand that you're good to go. So under applied overhead exists when the amount of overhead applied, this amount here, let's assume this is $100 is less than the actual, than the total, than the total amount of overhead actually incurred. So it's less. So actual is 120. So if we actually incurred $120 in overhead, but based on our predetermined overhead rate, we applied, we transferred $100 to work in process, to work in process, what happened is this, we underestimated because the actual was higher. This is the under. What happened when we overestimate? So if we have an overhead account here, again, we have, again, I'm going to keep writing this because it's going to make your life easy once and for all understanding this difference. Now what's going to happen is this. Now it's the opposite. When the over, <coughs> sorry, what happened is this, when the overhead is greater the overhead applied the greater so this is 100 and this is 80. now what we did is we over applied overestimated because the actual was 80 what we end up doing is applying estimate applying to work in process applying to work in process 100 but we actually incurred 80 so we have a difference of 20 this is the difference of 20 and we need to we need to know what do we need to do with this difference so this is the lesson for today now before we proceed any further most likely you are an accounting student or a cpa candidate that's why you are watching either or i'm going to ask you to go a step further go to my website farhatlectures.com where i have additional resources lecture multiple choice true false exercises that's going to help you understand this topic as well as other topics if you have not connected with me on linkedin please do so take a look at my linkedin recommendation if you're watching please click on the like button it doesn't it's not going to cost you anything if you like it like it it will help others as well. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. Now, the best way is to work an example to illustrate the concept. Adam actual overhead for the year was 775,000 with a total direct labor of 150,000 worked hour on, on jobs. So basically we have a manufacturing overhead account. And remember, this is the actual, this is the actual. How much overhead was applied to Adam's job during the year? Well, how do we apply? Well, we're going to have a predetermined overhead rate, and that ha this happens to be $5 per direct labor hour. Now, you have to understand, the predetermined overhead rate is predetermined. It's computed before we start the production period. Therefore, it's estimated. Now, 
If it's estimated at $5 per direct labor hour and we consumed 150,000 hours, let's see how much was applied. We'll take the predetermined overhead rate, $5, times the actual direct labor. And we saw all of this in a prior session when we talked about the overhead. And that's going to give us applied 750,000. So what, what happened here? The actual was more than the the actual was more than the estimated. So we underestimated. We underestimated by 25,000. The question becomes, what do you do with this 25,000? Manufacturing overhead will need to be closed. It's a temporary account, will need to be closed. Well, it cannot stay in manufacturing overhead. We have to transfer it. And let's think about the transferring it in the first place. What happened is this. We incurred 775, but we actually recorded in work and process 750. What does that mean? It means we underreported our cost. So what do we have to do? We have to go back, and if we have in cost of goods sold, let's assume in cost of goods sold, we have 3,450. We are going to transfer, close manufacturing overhead. We're gonna credit manufacturing overhead and transfer it to cost of goods sold, which in turn would increase cost of goods sold. Because we underestimated, now we make it up in cost of goods sold. And now manufacturing overhead is basically zero, whether it's a debit or a credit, it doesn't matter, it's zero. So the point to remember is this, manufacturing overhead is close to cost of goods sold. Now, if I have a debit, if I have a debit balance, I'm going to have to credit overhead, then I'm going to have to debit cost of goods sold. If I'm debiting cost of goods sold, I'm increasing my cost. Hopefully this makes sense. Let's change the example a little. Now, the actual overhead was 710, the actual overhead was 710, and the applied is 750. What happened here is we overestimated by 40,000. Again, we have to close it. How do we close it? We are going to debit and we are going to credit, close it to cost of goods sold. What happened is this, we reduce our cost of goods sold by 40,000. Why? Because we overestimated our overhead. Now we need to fix it. To fix it, you will reverse it. To fix it, you will reverse it. And we're closing it to cost of goods sold. Now, is this the only place where you can close overhead? We can also close the remaining overhead, which is either underapplied or overapplied, to cost of goods sold, finished goods, and work in process. So let's see how it works. Let's assume, back to the previous scenario, we have 40,000 and we overestimated our manufacturing overhead. Now, rather than closing the whole 40,000 to cost of goods sold, what we're going to do, we're going to take this 40,000 and rather than hitting the income statement, all of it, we're going to take the 40,000, spread some of it to work in process, spread some of it to finished goods and spread some of it to cost of goods sold. This happens when the overhead is large and you don't want the uh, the overhead difference is large, whether it's over applied or under applied to, to hit cost of goods sold. So that's why you will do it. So let's go ahead and, apl and apply this. So let's assume for a particular company, work in process is 860, finished goods is 210, and cost of goods sold is 415. If we add those three accounts, equal to 711. Now we find the percentage, uh, the percentage from the total. So work in process is 12%, which is 86,000 divided by 711,000. <coughs> Sorry. Finished goods, the same thing. We'll take 210 divided by 711 and cost of goods sold 415, 415 divided by 711. Therefore, what's going to happen, we're going to allocate 12% of the difference to work in process, 30% to finished goods and 58% to cost of goods sold. So here's what's going to happen. 40,000 times 12%, 40,000 times 30%, 40,000 times 58%. It's going to give us those figures. Now the entry would look something like this. We're going to debit manufacturing overhead to make it go down to zero. We're going to debit manufacturing overhead to reduce it down to zero. And we are going to credit, reduce work in process, reduced finished goods, and reduce cost of goods sold because originally we overestimated cost of goods sold. What should you do now? Go to farhatlectures.com and work multiple choice questions about this topic. True, false, exercises that's going to help you reinforce it. This is an easy topic, easy points. Perfect it. Invest in yourself, invest in your career. Good luck and study hard.